Your AMD graphics card's slow, so here's Radeon Monster Profile for you. The Last of Us trailer is here, and so are the Ryzen 7000 reviews. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today we're going to talk about the top story of Radeon Monster Profile, which is going to be a utility to help you get the most out of your AMD GPU. And this is being developed by somebody who's made these types of softwares for the AMD CPU in the past, and it now looks like they're switching their attention over to the graphics profile. So this is being developed by one Usmus, who's best known for his programs that have allowed you to actually undervolt the Ryzen processors and thereby get the best performance out of them. And he currently has the Hydra utility, which allows for a lot of tuning on the GPU side of things, as well as CPU side of things. Anyways, this new Radeon Monster Profile, according to his reports, can potentially get you significant boost out of the AMD GPUs that are currently on the market in the RDNA 2 side of things. So if we take a look at what this could potentially do, he's claiming that he can take an RX 6800 XT that's at stock and then boost it to the point where it's actually beating an RTX 3090 Ti. And according to their reports, this is done by changing volt frequency curves, voltages, and making sure that everything's running at the optimal temperature frequency ratios to make sure that your GPU is putting out the most actual gaming performance possible. And that's essentially what's happening with the RX 6800 XT here. What you have to sacrifice here is power consumption because while you're reducing certain things on like memory voltage, you're also increasing the power consumption on the GPU. And so a 6800 XT would consume about 255 watts at stock. But with these RMP profiles of 305 or 370, they're consuming 305 and 370 watts respectively. But that does give you, according to their reports, again, a better frame per dollar setup than every single other card that it's compared to, like the 3090 Ti 6900 XT or stock 6800 XT. So you're sacrificing power draw in order to actually get the most performance out of your PC. Now, again, this is not being validated by independent third parties. This is just being claimed by one Usmus at this point, but with a good track record of software development for AMD stuff in the past to indicate that it likely actually will be pretty good. Whether or not it's going to be able to hit the 13% increase that he's claiming on the 6800 XT on all GPUs remains to be seen how well this is going to work on the higher end cards like a 6950, 6900 XT. Not quite sure, but if you can get an instant 10% boost out of the current generation, that actually might be really good to keep you holding off past the RX 7000 series. And they said that the profiles are universal and adaptive. So it does seem like this could potentially be a good utility for anybody who bought the current RDNA 2 set of cards, or like we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News with prices coming down, it actually is a decent time to buy AMD. And if you can get unlocked performance out of it in the future by making sure that you're optimizing all of the temperatures, frequencies, and voltages using a simple utility, that, that could be really good. But we'll just have to wait and see for this utility to get released. He's currently claiming that's gonna come out in the fall, which is right around now. So we'll have to wait and see if this utility is gonna be able to hit the promises that it claims. But does this excite you? Something that will allow you to get more out of your PC? I wanna hear from from you down below in the comments. You're gonna hear about today's video sponsor, which is our merch for the upcoming Cannonball for the Cure charity stream. I actually finally got it in. You can see this UFD design to help support raising money to cure my son's rare disease. One of the most sobering statistics that we've come across in preparing for this year's Cannonball is the fact that our son has had 20,000 seizures since the last Cannonball. And so there's an urgent need for us as parents to see our son stop seizing, but also for the the other Singap families to get a cure for them. And every single shirt that's picked up helps to fund the production costs for this year's Cannonball for the Cure charity event, which will have some details and more information coming out, but it's taking place October 21st. We got a lot of big sponsors planned. It's gonna be bigger than last year. And if you could pick up a shirt at the link in the video description, it'd be much appreciated. And you can also pick up an RTX 4090 if you wanna, if you're in Hong Kong, 
it's available for purchase. People are picking up RTX 4090s for gigabyte like it's nothing. However, the issue is that it's just a paperweight at this point because it's not supported by NVIDIA drivers unless you're actually part of NVIDIA's press program, which is something that I'm intimately familiar with. If we look back at the RTX 20 series super launch, we go back to this video in July of 2019, they didn't let me into the press partner, but I got a card because I had a retail connection so i had an rtx 2070 super before it actually came out but i couldn't actually use it and then i had to try to hack the drivers and that worked for when i was doing my gtx 1660 review but it didn't work when i was doing my rtx 2070 super review because nvidia didn't want to give me nothing been there done that paperweights for gpus i've got them for days and crypto stocks goes on for days it's a bitcoin's up 1.7 percent right now to be at 19213 ethereum also up just a little bit roughly three percent to be at 13 1834 and Dogecoin's down 1.25% to be at six cents. And Reese, give give us your six cents on what good deals are out there on the internet. Nailed that one. Hey guys, I'm Reese. Totally me. I don't have load shedding. Look at all these great deals. That's a that's a lot of heckin' good deals that you can find at the link in the video description. This has been me, Reese, and now back to you, Brit Host. I love me some Brit Toast. Donkey Brew, ah, uh, Huyamora. Kyler, what's another South African phrase I say around here? Lecker, man, lecker. Lecker, man, lecker. That robot's cock long. Shouldn't say that on TV, which TV, TV series. It Last of Us got its trailer released. From what I'm gathering, I haven't watched it, haven't even played the game, which I know I probably should at this point, but uh, good reception. Let me know what you think of The Last of Us trailer down below in the comments. I'm not gonna play it here just in case I, like there's this subculture I've come across where people don't watch trailers and I didn't realize that was a thing until people were like, yeah, I don't want anything spoiled. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I like that. I don't care, but I like it. Spoil all the things for me. You can you tell me Bruce Willis was dead in Jumanji the entire time and I'll believe you. Have you still not seen the hit 2017 film Jumanji? Never seen The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club with Rob Schneider. Yes, that's yeah, the one. That's the one. And it appears that Ryzen 7000 is the one. See, I forced these conversations into the segue so the Catlin has to keep them in the video. Yep, that's the way to do it. Ryzen 7000 is the way to do it because reviews have actually come out about them and it's looking like they're pretty dang good. So we'll have links in the video description in case you want to go check out a whole bunch of third party reviews because there are a lot that did come out, but it's confirmed that all these CPUs now have integrated graphics, but it's only like two compute units and it's going to be good for like 30 FPS, 720p medium gaming. It's not going to be anything exceptional. These are not APUs, so hold off on that. It's just so that you have integrated graphics but essentially I'm gonna give you the boiled down version of what the Ryzen 7000 reviews are is that the 7950X and 7900X are untouchable in the current market if you exclude 13th gen because you have to because it's not out yet it beats the 12900K however things like the 7700X and the 7600X lose to something like the 12900K and actually are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with their price to performance counterparts on Intel side like a 12600K Okay. However, even more complicated is something like the 7700X, which actually loses out to the 5800X3D when it comes to gaming because of the extra 3D V cache. And then you add into the fact that in order to get something like the 7700X, you have to buy a brand new motherboard and DDR5 RAM, and the 5800X3D might actually be handicapping the ability for the 7700X to be a viable CPU. So it seems like if you want the best of the best right at this moment, we're supposed to be getting details on what's going on with Intel's 13th gen very soon. But right at this moment, as of the time of recording, the 7950X is the best gaming processor on the market, as well as for productivity. It's phenomenal. That likely will have some caveats coming to it again as Intel launches their stuff. The 7900X also looks to be a good performer, especially in good price, beating out the previous generation by the tune of 
10 to 15% in single threaded, up to 40% in multi threaded, good looking chips. However, that is coming at the cost of things like power. There's a lot of extra power draw that's going on with these chips going from 105 watt TDP at the top end to now 170 watts. And there's some comments out there like this one saying, somewhat disappointed to be honest. AMD is playing Intel's game now and raises the TDP to the max to squeeze out that few extra percent of performance, whereas the benchmarks show the chip is extremely power efficient when it isn't pushed to unreasonable levels. I guess efficiency doesn't mean anything for the big three anymore. Zen 4 is probably showing us what AMD is planning for RDNA 3 as well. Won't be surprised if the TDP there is on par with ADA. The platform is also too expensive for someone who wants anything less than the 7900X. It will be a while until things settle down and Zen 4 becomes affordable. Does this ring true for you? It seems to gather up all of the negative complaints about the 7000 launch and put them into one single comment. I definitely understand where they're coming from. It does seem like AMD is in a weird position. They're launching too soon to have a direct comp comparison with 13th gen, but they needed to have something out to put them at the top. But if 13th gen is going to have the performance uplift that we're expecting, it's likely going to be AMD in the top end. But I think more importantly, the thing that matters for regular gamers is the fact that their mid tier is going to get way better. If we're looking at something like the 7600X for 300 bucks is still going toe to toe with the 12600K, what's the 13600K going to look like when it has actually more cores and it's going to be priced roughly the same and allegedly you should still be able to use DDR4. Intel is in for a banger of a CPU generation. I'm excited for it. We obviously need more details before we can confirm it, but let me know your thoughts on Ryzen 7000 down below in those comments. And I'm gonna go below my, what? Ending that one. I said below, just so we're clear, I didn't. Okay, bye.